If you've seen movies like 300, Man of Steel, or Saving Private Ryan, chances are you've come across this film look called Bleach Bypass. Filmmakers use the Bleach Bypass effect to emulate something gritty and real based on the story that they are trying to tell. Today, I'm going to break down my process for how you can create your own Bleach Bypass look in your films like a professional Hollywood editor. If you are new to the channel, my name is Nicholas. I grade films, music videos, and documentaries for a living. I have worked with dozens of filmmakers and artists in creating the ideal look that they can only dream of for their projects. If you want more of these tutorials, then I highly recommend you smash that like button and subscribe for more. So let's begin. It's important that when you are creating a color grade that you're not just creating something flashy or cinematic just for the sake of something to be flashy or cinematic. It has to actually match what the vibe and the story is actually going to call for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you through my color space transform and show you what I saw when it was previewed on ArcGrid. Go into my settings right here. Bring this to a DaVinci wide gamut. I'll explain that in a little bit why I do this and do the exact opposite here. This time my output color space and gamma is going to be Rec 709 and going to be gamma 2.4. And I'm going to do the saturation compression because I like doing that. All right, so this is what I saw on ArcGrid. Pretty soft with cooler tones. Wanted to say to myself, what kind of story are we going to be getting from this image? You know, with how they shot it, how it was lit, how the characters are positioned. I want to create something that feels gritty and real, but cooler in tones. So the first thing I'm actually going to do before I hop into my exposure or my skin, I'm actually going to start right off with the bleach bypass effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this node here. This is a layer mixer, by the way. I'm going to take this node here. I'm going to go into my RGB mixer and just select monochrome. You can take the saturation all the way down to zero here, but my personal preference is just monochrome. And now I'm gonna right click here, go into my composite mode and select soft light. And let's see what happens. We're already creating something darker and grittier, but I am not gonna lose out on any detail in this, even if it's gonna be a bleach bypass look. It's still gonna look nice. The more compressed the shadows are, the more digital it's going to feel, and we don't want it to feel like some cheap filter. So the next thing I am going to do is I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about when it comes to the mid-tones or the shadows right here. We're going to go into our effects tab, and we're going to select DCTL, and you'll find Kazi's toolkit right here, or QT Charts. This will be found in the link in the description below. You don't necessarily need this, but it's really going to help you when it comes to preserving your mid grays or any other aspects of the tool you want to use it for. But for here, we're just going to be using the mid gray right here that I already have selected. So I'm going to enable this and this is what happens. We now see here and we see in the waveform, I'll even change it to Y so you can see it better where the mid grays are supposed to be sitting at right here and if i do before and after so when we're creating our contrast in our exposure node here we want to make sure that we are preserving as much detail in this area as we possibly can while also popping everything else out creating that effective bleach, bleach bypass look so let me zoom out here let me just turn this off and now I'm going to begin with my exposure. Actually, you know what? I'm going to label it, relabel it as my contrast, just so there's no confusion. Okay. So, the, so one of my preferred ways of creating a film contrast is you're going to go into your curves right here, select this, and now I'm going to begin. I'm going to bring it somewhere down here. Bring this up a little bit. Bring my shadows up a lot. Maybe somewhere around here. Bring this down. Yeah, no, that's fine. And bring this up a little bit. We're not looking too bad, but I definitely want to bring my exposure up a lot more. 
For the most part, we're sitting pretty well, but don't think that this is going to be counterintuitive because I'm actually going to go into my HDR palette and I'm actually going to, before I do that, I'm going to show you where we're sitting in the mid grays. Now it's like all the way down there, we can barely see anything. And if I do before and after, we definitely need to bring this back up again. So, in my contrast node, I'm going to go into my HDR high dynamic range that you see right here, and I'm going to go into my global, and I am going to crank this up like crazy until that white line that we see right here gets somewhere around here. And now we have a very nice looking contrast. We have successfully preserved all the detail in the shadows and the midtones, but we have created an even better contrast than we initially created. Now I'm actually gonna create the look. And I'm actually going to go in a different direction than normal. Instead of using my lift gamma gain, I'm actually going to go right into my curves. And I'm going to unlink this. And I'm going to fiddle around with the red, green, and blues. And just see what happens. Maybe somewhere around here. I'm mainly just looking at his face. Maybe that's a little too blue, but we're getting in that cooler range that I like to see. Maybe somewhere around here is good. Now that is looking very, very good and is looking real, real, and is looking very natural. And it's being built purely based on the zones that we've created in the contrast itself. I like to experiment a lot, so this is something completely new and I'm liking what it's doing. But the next thing I want to do is I just want to warm up his skin just a little bit. We don't technically need to do this, but for me, I just want to bring it far and dial it back to find that sweet spot. So let me go into my Shift H, select his skin, make my adjustments. So I'm really only selecting him. That's looking pretty good. Maybe somewhere in here. No, that's fine. And that's looking pretty good. Take my blur radius, bring it somewhere around here, and maybe denoise it just a tad. Somewhere around there is pretty good. And now I'm gonna go into my gamma and gain, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I just wanna warm him up. Still have his skin be natural. before and after and it's looking very very nice but you could say that it has a little bit more saturation than it needs to for a serious look so I'm going to bring the saturation down maybe somewhere around maybe somewhere around here is good before and after yeah that's looking pretty good actually I'm just going to bring just a little bit more red in his skin just a little bit more. Much better. All right, so we're looking pretty good so far, but as you guys know, I do like to create some rich film density, no matter what, because that's just part of my uh, color grading identity, you could say. So I wanna go into my skin right here, my color slice tool. Just observe what is actually being selected here and maybe bring the luminance down a little bit. Don't, don't play around with the skin too much because you just did with the qualifier. Uh, nothing much with the green. Yeah, for the cyan, we have a lot to work with, so I'm going to bring my saturation up. Yeah, you know what? I'll bring it down, actually. We'll make it a bit more serious. And you know what? We'll bring the saturation down in the skin a little bit more as well so that it blends in seamlessly with the background. Somewhere around there is pretty good. Let's see with the blue. You can say that there, this is probably the most saturated part of the entire frame, so we're gonna bring this down. Somewhere around here, and bring that luminance down, or up. And wow, we're creating a very, very nice looking image right here. Very serious, very gritty, but we're not done yet. 
We're gonna add just a bit more film texture to this entire image. So the next step is we're gonna go into my film grain right here. And instead of using the film grain effect, we're actually gonna use the film look creator. So I'm gonna drag it all the way here. And this is what we get. Obviously it looks trash right now, but we're gonna customize. We're gonna go into our preset right here. And I want a 35 millimeter. I like that one much better. We're gonna go into our color blend and just bring that all the way, all the way back. And this film look blend is way too much. So we're gonna bring this all the way here and we're gonna drag it just a little bit so that there's a little effect to it. And let's do before and after. Maybe see what we can do with the skin bias, what it does to that. Nah, it doesn't really do much. If something doesn't affect too much of the image, then don't bother working on it. The vignette, I actually like the vignettes, so I'm gonna keep that, but I'm gonna maybe bring the size down just a little bit. Yeah, that's looking pretty good before and after. It helps make him stand out as well. Now the halation, uh, we don't really need halation for this one. I don't really like it anyway. So the bloom, we don't really need that either. It doesn't really add much to it. But here we have the grain. And for the grain, I'm gonna zoom in and see what it actually affects. Now, a lot of film grain that you would see in a movie like Moneyball, the film grain actually has color to it. So we're actually gonna keep the saturation. Normally I would take it to all the way back to zero, but this time I'm just gonna keep it. Increase my size a little bit, my overall amount. See what it does to the softness. Somewhere around there is pretty good. Image defocus, let's see what it does here. Yeah, just add a little bit of defocus. That's, that's fine. Flickers, uh, we don't want that. Gate weave, we don't want that either. Film gates off, that's fine. And we're almost there. To really top this off is I'm gonna go into my sharp node right here, go into my radius, and I'm gonna select this triangle right here, and I'm going to select radius and scaling. But before I do that, I'm gonna zoom in and you're gonna see how much of an effect it, it has on his face and his beard. So I'm gonna go into my highlight tool right here. I'm gonna go into my A slash B. And I'm gonna select radius and bring it all the way down to somewhere around here. Now don't worry, this is looking too sharp, but that's why we're gonna go into our scaling and we're gonna bring it down so that it goes for, so that it goes for the softer edges. Somewhere maybe around here. Let's do before and after, before, after. You can even say that maybe we can bring the radius up a little bit more so it doesn't feel very digital or too sharp. Before, after, it's looking very, very nice. Maybe you can bring it one more stop. There you go. All right, this is looking amazing. So let's roll a full clip. Creating a bleach bypass effect can be done in many ways, but I hope that this process actually makes sense to you all and it's easy for you to emulate in your own projects. But the three things that I want you to remember when creating your bleach bypass effect is one, make sure it matches the story you're trying to tell, two, you're preserving your mid grays, and three, how far do you want to actually go with the effect? If you found this video useful, let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about color grading, then I highly recommend that you watch this video right here.